well so we have come to the last lecture of this uh, rectifier series and here we would like to find the ripple factor for full wave rectifier as well as for half wave rectifier so so far we have covered the working principle half wave rectifier efficiency full wave rectifier efficiency and in this lecture we will try to find the expressions for the ripple factor now what is the ripple factor uh, the output of the rectifier is not a pure DC so pure DC if we uh, try to have a look at pure DC pure DC is something a straight line so this kind of straight line is the pure DC but whatever we are getting at the output of the rectifier like for half wave rectifier we get it like uh, this kind of output we get and for full wave rectifier we get this kind of output so it is clearly evident that these outputs are not a steady DC but what we find that these outputs are unidirectional so these we can call a pulsating DC the output of half wave rectifier as well as full wave rectifier is the pulsating DC that means this DC component output is having both DC component and AC component which are mixed now the AC component mixed here with the DC component are named as the ripples which are very much unwanted as the output of the rectifier so smaller the ripple comp component it is nearer to the output current uh, towards the DC that means if we can make the ripples smaller instead of this kind of output if we get say this kind of output so that is much more nearer to the steady DC however it is not exactly steady DC but we can at least reduce these things to a large extent by using another device followed by the rectifier that is called filter so actually whatever we use in this circuit it is not only the rectifier but rectifier followed by filters however filters are not the topic of discussion in this particular lecture so we will take up filters in some other lecture now ripple factor that is defined as the uh, ratio of the value of AC component present in the output current with the DC component so that means here it is denoted by this symbol gamma and it is simply IAC by IDC where IAC is the effective value of the AC components present in the output current now if we have a look at the pulsating DC then the effective value that means the RMS value which is given as I RMS equal to under root I square AC plus I square DC that means magnitude of both AC component and DC component are considered and root mean square we are finding so that is what we are calling I RMS so from this equation we can find that I AC is equal to under root I square RMS minus I square DC so let us call it equation number 2 so now if we uh, put these things in equation number 1 the value of IAC in equation number 1 so we find that the expression for the ripple factor that is given as under root I square RMS minus I square DC divided by IDC so now if we take IDC inside the inside the uh, under root then we can write it like this i square rms minus i square dc divided by if you are taking it inside the under root then we can also write it as i square dc so whole to the power half that is under root so now if we uh, separate this subtraction then we find i rms by i dc whole square minus 1 because idc square by idc square that will give us 1 so this equation 3 is the general expression to find the ripple factor for both kind of rectifiers half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier now let us try to find the ripple factor of half wave rectifier so for which we need the value of irms and idc which we have already found in the discussion of finding the efficiency of half wave rectifier in the description box I have given the uh, uh, URL for uh, the URL link for 
finding the half wave rectifier efficiency where we have derived this using the uh, integration we have derived this uh, expression i r m s equal to i m by 2 and i d c equal to i m by pi for half wave rectifier. So, now we are substituting these values and the expression of gamma. So, i r m s is replaced as i m by 2 and i d c is replaced as i m by pi. So, this i m and this i m get cancelled. So, we are left with pi by 2 whole square minus 1 whole to the power half. So, if we simplify this, we get the ripple factor as 1.21. Now, this is very interesting 1.21 that means for a half wave rectifier, whatever DC component we have, the AC component is more than that. So, in the rectifier output, the DC component what is expected, the steady DC component is actually less than the uh, AC component or the ripples present in the rectifier output. So, very difficult to use this kind of uh, output rectifier output for the electronic circuits. So, now we are going for the full wave rectifier ripple factor and for full wave rectifier IRMS and IDC these are also found separately in the uh, lecture of uh, efficiency of full wave rectifier that also I have given in the uh, description box link for finding the efficiency of full wave rectifier please have a look at that and we found that I R M S equal to I M by root 2. So, this is different from the half wave rectifier as well as this is also different this is 2 is I M by pi. So, these two expressions are different from half wave rectifier. So, now we are substituting these values in equation number 1. So, there we find as I m by root 2 and twice I m by pi whole square minus 1 whole to the power half. So, that is leading us to pi square by 8 minus 1 and if we uh, simplify this we get gamma is equal to 0.483. So, now this is also very interesting in previous case we have seen for half wave rectifier gamma is equal to 1.21 that means ripples are more than that of the steady DC. But here you see that ripples are quite less it is almost 50 percent of the steady DC. So, steady DC is much higher steady DC component is much higher for the full wave rectifier. So, this is the significance of ripple factor because before applying any kind of filter we must know the how much ripples are produced by the rectifier accordingly we can choose the appropriate filter. So, that is it for ripple factor and join me for the next lecture. Thank you.